Hello, everybody, and welcome back to another Obsidian video. I just want to kick things off by showing you the end result. This is going to be where we are going to get in this video. Very first thing we're going to have is a books MOC. MOC stands for Map of Contents. So this is just going to be a page that has a button that you can click to create a new book from a template that we're going to build. Here's the template right here, and I can do this to kind of preview what this template looks like. And then there's going to be a table that lists all of the different books that you have, assuming that you already have a bunch of books to put into this system. Uh, it's going to have the date, it has the title, it has the author. This is going to be what I build in here, but obviously you can use this as a foundation, you can build on top of it, you can modify things, change things, just follow along and, and I'll show you what I'm doing. Um, after that, I want to dig into what an actual book note is going to look like. Uh, and for me, this is how I do it. Uh, I like to have this be the title of each of the notes. This is the date that I read the book or that I finished the book. Uh, and then the title is right here. There's an emoji in between. So that's visually easy to identify in my vault. Uh, we got some properties here. We've got tags. We've got the author. You can add if somebody recommended it or if you saw it mentioned somewhere, which I did. Uh, and then here's the, the bulk of the note. So down here is highlights. These are highlights that I take as I'm going through and reading the book. I import those highlights in and then I do what I like to call processing my highlights or processing my notes. And usually what that involves is I go through these highlights and I add italics and I add bold as I go through and, and reread them. These are kind of notes to my future self. So in the future, if I'm going back and rereading these book notes, what words do I want to jump out at me? And if they're bolded, they're very much gonna jump out. So usually the main subject of whatever I want to remember, I put in bold and then the things relating to it or important information that doesn't necessarily need to jump out at me, but that I want to remember as I'm coming back to it, I'll put in italics. Um, I don't know how else to explain it besides that. You kind of, as you do this more, get a gut feeling of what you personally want to bold and what you personally want to italicize. But once you do that, or as you're going, uh, you can pull out individual quotes that you feel like are important from this book and then save that in a quotes section. And then here, this is the most important part. This is a notes section where anything that you learn down below, you rewrite it in your own words in this notes section. And so ideally, the whole thought is, and again, this is a modified version of the Zettelkasten system, which you might be familiar with, or how to take smart notes. The important thing is when you come back to, say, the order of time, this book note, first thing you're going to want to do is take a look at your notes and you want this to be super quick, super fast to read, to understand what it was you learned from this book. And then if you want to dive in deeper, you can go to the highlights section. If you want to pull a quote, you have quotes that are ready for you to do. But at the end of the day, this is going to be your key area of the book section. And it's kind of your future note to yourself about what you took away personally from this book. And so this is what the entire system looks like. If you're new to this channel, welcome. Uh, I've started recording a bunch of different Obsidian video videos for different systems that I have. Uh, you can go to my channel to check them out. And also there's gonna be links in the description below. But some of the other videos that I've done is my daily note system, my meeting note system, people note system, and physical note system. Uh, and now finally sharing books because enough of you requested it. Also, just a note about how I do things personally, there are definitely some opportunities for automation that you can add here if you want. A lot of the things that I'm doing manually are because I want to be doing them manually, including the entire import like and processing process. There are ways to automate it with different services. I did those briefly for a period and I found that I like manually doing it because it kind of makes it makes processing a book an event and it forces me to think about it in a different way. If that's not the same for you, feel free to automate it, use different services to do that. Um, but I'm going to show you exactly how I do it uh, and how I like to do it. 
I sort of hinted at it when I was showing you what this whole thing looks like when it's done, but I want to be explicit about what the entire system is for taking these notes and importing them into Obsidian for all of your books. So the first thing is as I am reading a book, I usually it's going to be on a Kindle, uh, so a digital e-reader. So as I'm going and I'm reading books on a Kindle, I'm highlighting passages that are meaningful to me in some way or another. Uh, optionally, if you have a thought or you have an idea related to a book, you can write that down either in, what is it? Either in a notebook, if you have one of those handy with you, or just take a note in wherever you want to. Make sure that they're eventually going to end up in your book notes. But what you wanna be doing is as you're reading, highlighting passages that are meaningful to you and taking any notes of any thoughts that you have. When you've finished reading a book, my process is to log it. So I usually log it in Goodreads, although I just recently switched to Storygraph. I'm still trying to see if I like that. So I log it in Goodreads and Storygraph as of right now. Uh, and then I run a script. So I wrote a script that processes my Kindle highlights into this format that you see here. And I'll show you exactly how I run that in case you want to do something similar. Um, once I run that script, I get a text file with the notes. I just copy and paste that into a new book note. I create the book note by clicking the new book button right here. And then I just copy and paste the notes in. And then finally, I process my notes. And processing it means going through all of the highlights to bold and italicize, and then making any notes about things that I want to remember and pulling out any quotes. Uh, and also adding any tags. Uh, make sure that you link to anything else relevant in your uh, system. And that's it. That's the entire system. So now let's actually walk through actually implementing this system. Here we are in an empty vault that I have created for these sorts of tutorials. The only thing that's in this vault uh, is two things. One, I installed a theme. Uh, I think I recently switched the theme. So the theme that I'm using is, oh, I haven't, LYT mode. This is Nick Milo. He does linking your thinking. I really like his theme, so that's what I use here. Uh, and then I've also added a bunch of folders and directories. Um, so you can see like there's extras, there's images, people, scripts, templates. So this templates in extras is something that we'll be using. MOCs, which is map of contents. I have a couple from some past tutorials in here, um, but basically this is an empty vault uh, and I'm going to keep it empty because we're gonna start from scratch and set this all up. So the first thing we're gonna be doing is creating two new files. The first is the books map of contents and the other is the books template. So let's create the map of contents first. Do Command N to do a new file. And then let's call this Books MOC. And as I mentioned, I always like to start these with emojis. Uh, apparently, emojis don't necessarily play nice on especially Windows and some other systems. So make sure you are aware of what you're doing. You might be impacting future compatibility by using an emoji, but I'm not as worried about that, so I use emojis in mine. So now we have the books MOC. Let's move this into our MOCs folder. So that's going to be right here. Of course, you can click and drag. I like doing things via the command palette because it just makes things faster when you have that muscle memory. So if you do command P to open the command palette, you type move, and then make sure you see move file to another folder. And then you type in MOC, and you can see that that's an option here. Select that and you'll see our books MOC moved into the MOC folder. Now, I shared my books MOC file on GitHub. So I'll link to that in the description. So I'm just gonna go over to Safari, my books MOC. This is the link that you'll get in Safari. I usually just go to raw, command A, select all, command C to copy, and let's go back to Obsidian and we'll paste this in here. Perfect. So now you'll see this template. Uh, and just like the other videos, uh, sorry if I'm repeating myself, if you watched those already, we're gonna see a code block for a meta bind. This is going to turn into a button once we install this plugin. And likewise, you see a code block for data view. And this is going to turn into our table once you install the data view plugin. For now, we don't even need to worry about these. We can just leave it as is. Uh, so now what we want to do is create the template for our books. 
Uh, and so what you could do again is Command N to create a new note. But I noticed that in the book's MOC, I have a, a link here. You can see that this is in between double brackets. So this is a link, but it is grayed out because we don't yet have a note that has this title. So if we hold down Command and we click this, it's going to create that page. So we're just going to do that to create our book's template. Uh, and again, what I'm going to do is go over to Safari and just copy and paste this. Safari, here's the template for that. And again, it's very basic. You can edit yours based on what you want in your book template. Personally, I just like to keep things super simple, which is why a lot of my systems and a lot of my templates are very basic. So we're going to paste that in. And that looks good to me. Um, oh yeah, we need to move this. So this right here is in our root directory. We need to move this into our templates directory. So again, Command P, type in move, make sure you select current file to another folder, type in templates, and it's, again, extras templates is where I store mine. So press enter like that, and boom. Now we have our books MOC and our books template. Let's close both of these and let's install the plugins that we need. Uh, again, if you followed any of my other tutorials, you probably already have this, but in case this is your first video of mine you are watching, I'm just gonna go through this. So we're gonna be installing three different community plugins. Uh, make sure you go to community plugins here and you might see a warning to turn off restricted mode. Definitely turn that off. That's how you install community plugins. So the first thing we're gonna do is go to browse, Two of the plugins that we're installing are so popular that they're gonna show up on this very front page right here. So you can search for them, of course, but the first one is just data view, which I see right here. So I'm gonna click on this and then it's two click install. Install, enable, that's it. Data view is installed. Uh, the next thing we're gonna do is templater, which we can see right here. Again, click on this and then two clicks. Install, enable. And then the very last one that we want to install is called meta bind. So type in meta bind, install, enable. Wonderful. So close out of this. We're going to go to templater and we're going to tell templater where our templates are. So our templates are extras templates. You can see I start typing it and it shows up. Just select that. And there we go. Now let's open our books MOC and we'll see these code blocks now are buttons and tables. This table is empty because we don't have any book notes, um, but this button, as long as you click out of the code block, will actually show up as a button. Uh, one of the things I wanna do in this video is actually just remake this button. Just in case this doesn't work for you, if you're using different paths, uh, it's not gonna work. So let's just do that from scratch. I'm just gonna delete this. Uh, and then we're gonna open the command palette again. So command P, uh, everything you do is via the command palette. So get used to typing command P. Uh, type in MetaBind, cause that's the plugin that we just installed. And then you can press down to open button builder. Click return there. I'm gonna say new book. And then under actions, we're gonna choose templater create note, and then add action to so the template file. Let's choose uh, our template for books, for folder. Uh, I like to save these in sources slash books. So I have a, a folder called sources where it could be books, it could be articles, it could be anything else. Uh, and then in there is just books. So I'm gonna choose that. Um, let's just call this title. It could be anything you want. This is just the file name for the default note. Uh, and then just click copy to clipboard. And then we're gonna paste this in here. You can see the code block looks very familiar. And if you click out of the code block, you'll get a button. So let's test it. Let's see if this works. Wonderful, that worked. Now we have a new note. We can see if we're in, where is it? Sources, books. You can see it's located in the right location. Uh, and this is just an empty book note that we can add to, we can modify, we can do anything. Um, Great, so now let's actually use uh, the script the, that I wrote in order to uh, process our clippings from an Amazon Kindle, assuming that's what you're doing as well. So the first thing I wanna do is go over to Safari, 
And this is gonna be the GitHub repo for the script that I wrote. Uh, again, you can modify this, you can do it for uh, whatever means that you want, but uh, this is what I do. And you can scroll down in this readme. This is gonna be the format that everything exports to. So you can see it looks very familiar to what my Obsidian Vault looks like, basically from here down. So I just usually copy and paste from here down and bring it directly into Obsidian. Um, I'm gonna show you how to do that because uh, it is pretty simple if you haven't actually done any of this before. So this right here, extract Kindle clippings.py is the actual script. You can notice that this is just a demo um, and these are a license readme. These aren't what you need for running this script at all. Just this extract Kindle clippings.py. So if we click on this, you'll see a code block. This is just the code that extracts all of the stuff. And again, if you know code, you can look through it and change it. If you don't know code, you could paste it into chat GPT and ask it to make changes for you. Uh, whatever you wanna do, mix and, and remix this. Uh, usually when I copy and paste code, I go to raw. So I'm gonna click raw, command A for all, command C for copy. And then let's open up a text editor. I use sublime text. Sublime text, and then I'm just going to paste this in here. Great, and let's see, what did I call this? I'm just gonna copy this exact name too. So copy, go back to sublime text, let's save this, save it there. And on the desktop, I created this temp folder that I'm just gonna use. You can save it wherever you want. So let's put this uh, there's not a double pie. We don't want that. Okay, great. So let's save this right here. Going back to our GitHub repo, you can see that there are instructions for how to run. Um, the f a few things we need to do, we need to get our My Clippings file from our Kindle. Uh, and then we're going to have to do a few more steps. So let's do it one at a time. Uh, let's go to Finder. Uh, this, as you can see, I already have my Kindle plugged in. I'm navigated to it. Going into documents, uh, let's see, there we go. And here's the temp folder as well. So this is documents and you can see myclippings.txt. Mine has a little highlight here just because I added that. You can definitely clip on, click on it and then choose a tag for it to make it easier to find in the future because you may have hundreds of things here depending on how many books that you have. Um, so I'm just gonna take this and drag it into temp as well. Great, so now what we need to do is uh, we have to make the script executable. So this is a Python script. Python is a developer language. In order for our computer to want to, or not to want to, to be able to run this, we have to make it executable. So we're gonna move over to the terminal now. So go to terminal. Uh, let me clear this because I was playing with it earlier. Um, I'm already navigated to my temp folder. You can see PWD, print working directory. Uh, I am in desktop and then temp. And then if I LS, I'm going to list the files that are in here. So you can see there's the two here. If we go back to the visual finder, we can see the two files there. So we are in the same location in terminal as we are right there. Great. So we need to make this executable. So as we can see from the instructions, what we need to type is chmod plus x, plus x makes it executable. And then if you start typing the name of this file, extract, uh, and then press tab, it autofills. So I always just start typing the word and then press tab and it's gonna autofill to the right one and then press enter. Great, now it's executable, easy as that. The next thing in order to run it, we're going to have to type this code in this directory, so the path to the my clippings and then the output directory. I use an example in here. Uh, this example is specifically based on my computer. So you will have to change this for yours. I fortunately, because I wrote this, get to uh, copy and paste it. So let's copy and paste here and see what it's doing. So the first thing is uh, dot slash and then extract Kindle clipping. So this is gonna be this script right here. Uh, and then this is the path to the file, which again is in desktop temp. 
and then my clippings, and then this is the path where I want it out. So I'm gonna have it create a new folder called clippings inside temp. One of the cool things that you can do is click and drag something from here to the terminal. So when it says what you need is the path to your My Kindle clippings, you can type this first part, press space, and then click and drag your clippings file into there. And it'll automatically import the path to that file. So that's a little shortcut you can definitely do. Let's go to terminal again and let's run this. Great, it ran. Now let's go back to Finder. Let's take a look at what we got. So now there's a clippings folder here. This wasn't there before. And if you go in here, you can see that it has a few outputs of different notes. Uh, let's just do a, in this video an example with this book right here, which is Nick Gray's book about how to host parties, which is pretty great. So if we double click this, you can see it's all nicely formatted for all of my highlights. So uh, let me start here. I'm gonna copy all of this. Let's go back to Obsidian. We already created this new note by pressing the button. I'm gonna take everything here, delete it, and then just paste in all of the notes. Uh, and again, once it's here, you can reformat to see however you like. I'm gonna play around and clean things up a little bit. What I always like to do is the title of this page I'm gonna actually make it a link to this. So in double quotes, the two hour cocktail party. That way, if I change the thing, change the title here, it's gonna automatically update there. Uh, it's basically the only fancy thing that it does, but I always like that as well. Um, so yeah, go through. And now we're actually processing the note, right? So. This is the part where you can probably automate a lot of it, but I like doing it manually because as I said, it kind of makes me think about what I'm doing. It makes the actual process of importing the book an event. And the fact that it is an event with its own rituals helps stick it into memory better and helps you be more mindful as you're thinking about this book and processing your notes. Uh, and so then the next thing that I would do is just go through uh, and bold, and highlight different things. Uh, and then as I'm going, I'll have a section here. For highlights where I can just make notes to myself or pull out quotes. Uh, and as I'm kind of thinking about other notes where this might relate to, I might add it here. anything that you want, and just make sure that this note is connected to other things in your vault. Uh, and then just do yourself, a, give yourself a gift for your future self by writing notes and actually processing these notes once you take them. All right, I think that about covered it. This was a little bit of a more uh, in-depth video than some of my other ones, but this is what I do for all of my books. I hope you found this useful. Uh, definitely feel free to watch some of my other videos, like, subscribe, all of those sorts of things. Um, I've been having a lot of fun making YouTube videos, and so I'm hoping to create, I'm going for once a week right now. So hopefully I'll see you along for the ride. It'll be a lot of fun. I'll see you in the next video.